I want to discuss a circuit solving technique, a node voltage method in this video. So the procedure for using node voltage method to solve circuit to find out various voltages and currents in a circuit is first we identify the total number of nodes in a circuit. Let's say total number of nodes is n. Then we write, identify, uh, we label one node as the ground node or reference node and we write KCL for the remaining n minus 1 nodes. Current Kirchhoff's current equation for all other nodes. And then we solve, we have a, uh, we have a simultaneous equations, 3, three 4 simultaneous, depending on how many nodes are there. And we solve the equations for the uh, unknown voltages. So, though it's current equations, they will be in terms of voltages in terms of node voltages basically and when there are up to four nodes in a circuit so when there are three equations we can solve them manually using a determinant method matrix and then writing determinant for the matrices and uh, other the when it's more, number of nodes is more than that we can solve manually it becomes very uh, tedious and it's it's not practical to solve manually so here is an example circuit this circuit we need to solve any current or basically we need to apply uh, use nodal voltage analysis node voltage method so first we label identify uh, which node we can uh, label as the reference node so there is one node here one node here and another node here the big one and most number of elements are connected to this node so we will label this node as the ground node or reference node and let's call this node node 1 and the label this voltage as v1 node 2 voltage v2 now we will write kcl for each of the nodes so for this one node 1 we write kcl kcl for node 1 So, Kirchhoff's current law can be said as algebraic sum of leaving currents to be zero. At any node, the algebraic sum of leaving currents to be zero is zero. So, we will, here there are three branches. So, these three are the three leaving currents. So, algebraic sum of these three currents will be zero according to KCL. So, this current is, will be, V1 minus this voltage divided by this resistance, just Ohm's law. So V1 minus E1 over R1 from Ohm's law, we know that, because that one is the voltage drop across this resistance. V1 minus E1 is the voltage drop across R1, when the current is going from V1 to, in the, V1 to E1 basically. So that's that current. Then this current that's going down, will be V1 minus 0 because this is reference node 0. So V1 minus 0 divided by R2 because that will be the uh, voltage voltage basically using Ohm's law here across R2 the voltage the current will be V1 over R2. So V1 over R2. Finally this current that is going to the right what is the voltage drop here that will be V1 minus V2 and the current through this will be since current is going from V1 to V2 current uh, will be V1 minus V2 divided by R3 from Ohm's law V1 minus V2 divided by R3 from Ohm's law so I will separate V1s and R1 uh, V2s so this can be written like that minus V2 over R3 and we have minus E1 over R2 which I will take on the right hand side. This one is a constant because this is the voltage source divided by the current. So because it's constant I have taken on the other side. So this is equation 1. We have V1 here and V2 here. So now we've, I will write KCL for the other node, node 2, KCL at node 2. So again I will label three currents to be outgoing this direction this direction and in this direction
So the current that's going in that direction will be V2 minus E2 divided by R5. V2 minus e, E2 divided by R5. The current that's going downwards will be V2 minus 0 divided by R4. V2 over R4 basically. And, and finally, the, this current, now we are assuming that the current is going from V2 to V1. So V2 minus V1 divided by R3. V2 minus V1 divided by R3. Sum 0. Now I will again separate V1 and V2 terms. I will write V1 uh, first. So V1 over R3 plus V2 divided by 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4 plus 1 over R5. And on the right hand side I will take again this one E2 over R5. So this is the constant on the right hand side. This is equation 2. So these two are two simultaneous equations. We can use determinant method to solve them. So that will be like this V1 over so R1 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 the coefficients 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 and here it is 1 over R3 minus I will write a little bit so let's go there and then the coefficients of V3 is minus 1 over R3 minus 1 over R3 and this is minus 1 over R sorry R 1 over R3 plus 1 over R4 plus 1 over R5 so these are in the denominator coefficients of V1 in the first uh, column and coefficients of V2 in the second column for both the equations and in the numerator will be since we are trying to find out uh, V1 the right hand side will be here in the first column so right hand sides of both the equations so E over R1 and E2 over R5 E actually E1 that one is I, E1 over R1 and E2 over sorry a huge mistake so e that's the first so e1 over r1 and in the second row will be e2 over r5 and here it will be the same the second column will be the same as denominator so r5 r3 plus r4 plus r5 1 over r5 like that you can write them in brackets so in parentheses so like that so this is for v1 and for v2 it would be just denominator would be the same i can write again actually v2 denominator will be the same i can call it delta like that so if this part is delta and and the numerator will be now it will be this first column will be the same as denominator 1 r1 plus 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3 divided and in the second row will be this one and here it will be e1 over r1 and e2 over r5 just like the previous one v1 and this is for v2 so for v2 the second column is the right hand side the right hand side is basically in both rows so this is the this is how we can uh, solve two node voltages and then from that we can find all the currents as well what we can uh, with careful observation what we can see is if we look at this equation uh, if we write the currents as outgoing currents there is one benefit that what we have as coefficient of v1 for the first equation is inverse sum of all the resistances connected to that node so r1 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3 1 over r1 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3 these three are the resistances that are connected to v1 and in the the coefficient of v2 is for the first equation is when we are writing kcl for node 1 that is minus 1 over r3 that is the connecting resistance inverse and negative 
that's what it is. So similarly for node 2 it should be 1 over r3 the coefficient of v2 will be 1 over r3 1 over r5 1 over r4 that's what it is 1 over r3 1 over r4 1 over r5 and the coefficient of v1 now will be negative 1 over r3 just like before because r3 is the connecting resistance uh, v between uh, connecting v1 and v2 so that's what here it is for v2 so we can write uh, the equations directly actually sometimes or we can even if we don't do initially when we are still learning uh, we can check whether we have written correctly by looking uh, whether we have got this kind of uh, uh, coefficients for both the equations so yeah this is just an introduction video and we need to do some problems to get used to get used to it and to get some skills so that uh, and we I have done for two uh, so there are only two nodes in this circuit particular but it can as I said it can be three nodes as well up to three nodes manually is uh, convenient it's possible to do but then we will end up having uh, three column and three row matrices and as a result three column three row determinant so the we have to solve from there uh, from there so yeah this is just an introduction I will do some problems hopefully later on